Welcome back everybody to another GB Studio tutorial. In this one, I'll be expanding on the Zelda template that I'm basically creating here. By creating the screens that in Zelda, you would usually notice as you walk around. So as you can see, currently the camera follows the player uh, and I'm gonna make it so the screen stays static until you move into the very left or the right or the up or the down of the screen and then it will move to the next screen and you will be able to move around that zone until you go to another screen basically. So let's begin. The first thing we'll want to do is create a map. Basically the map that we create or the level we create or the background, whatever you wanna call it, we want to be set up to work with the screens that we're gonna be using. So for that, we need to keep in mind that it needs a border and we need to make it to the screen size of the Game Boy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new tile set in tiled, and I have made a video on tiled before. It's a image editor that lets you work in tiles, which is how the Game Boy functions. It works via tiles, eight by eight pixel tiles. And I'm gonna create this tile set based on the placeholder background artwork that comes with GB Studio in the sample. So in the sample project. So as you see here, it's called Sample Town. I'm just gonna be using this. I'm gonna open it up, eight by eight pixels. You see here's a tile width. I'm gonna save as, I'm just gonna save it as Sample Town. And then as you can see here, this is what a tile set could look like. Obviously this one is basically already built as an actual map, but if we create a new map, we can create it to the screen size of the Game Boy, which is 20 tiles in width and 18 tiles in height. And what we wanna be doing is working in that range. So I'm gonna call this map one. And if you think about it, this is what one screen will look like. What I'm gonna do is create a four screen map. And in the original Zelda, I don't know how many it actually was. It was quite a lot. Um, and by keeping it within these tiles, it actually makes the game seem bigger because you don't have free reign. You're, you're kind of limited to where the screens let you go. At least it feels like that for me anyway. So what I'm gonna do is resize the map to 40 by 36. As you can see, it's doubled the space. Uh, and this will mean that we will be able to have four screens in the game, right? So I'm just gonna simply take this tree and I'm gonna duplicate it along the top here. And so you see, I just highlighted it with the with my cursor and then it's now a clone stamp tool. So I'm just cloning it and stamping it down. I'm gonna do that with the lefts and rights as well. When you create your maps, you might wanna have a, you know, a thinner edge because this will be cutting into our screen size. Uh, and of course we could just extend it up a bit and make sure that in GB Studio, we make the screens fit where we wanna see, see it better. Um, but it's better, it's good to have a plan in your brain, in your mind when you begin. And you need to remember that there is a limit on unique tiles and that's why I'm using a tile set. Um, it's because I don't want to have to um, scale it down afterwards. Um, by having repeating tiles in this, it means that my job is a lot easier. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is create a barrier between the two screens. So if you remember, I want there to be a screen here, a screen here, a screen here, and a screen here. And to get from one screen to the other, I'm gonna make it so um, there are slight boundaries. So maybe I'll only do it from top to bottom where there is a slight boundary. I'll make it so left and right, there is nothing. Um, but it is kind of important that we do separate it in some sense, because if it's just an open space like this, it might become quite difficult for us and the player to navigate it. But I haven't done that much testing yet, so it's important that you do testing too. And it always depends on the mechanics that you want in your game. For example, if we're gonna have tons of enemies all going around at the same time, this might not be the most optimized strategy to create a game uh, in this way. And I've just realized when I put the grass in, I'm selecting 
I just I'm just selecting a few pieces of grass and then I'm using the fill tool and I'm also using the random tool. As you can see, it fills in randomly based on the the ones I've highlighted here. If I highlight way more, then the the amount of you know blanks to little pieces of grass percentages will be different. Um, and I in my other videos I have talked about you know setting your own percentages. Um, but yeah, let's just put that down. So we need to think about where the actual screens lie. So I'm gonna create a new layer. I'll call this one uh, background and I'll call the next one screens. And I'm just gonna take some of the green from here and I'm gonna plot out the actual, what the screen size actually is. If you look at the very bottom down here, when I'm hovering over a tile, it tells you whereabouts it is in the thing. So this is zero, zero, this is 20, zero, and this is 39, zero. So that means zero is technically one. So 21 is technically 20. Then down is probably the same logic. So 19 will be 18. And then there we go. And just to double check, we can highlight this, copy it over here. Make sure we turn off the random in order to not do that. Uh, and as you can see, I've, I overshot it. Um, so we can actually just do this. And then we can cut and paste in here. There we go. So these are the four screens that we want there to be in the game. And I can just turn these off at any point. I can even lock it so we don't accidentally edit it again. Uh, and basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it so the steps are in a place here. So the player will be able to see that they have to go down the steps in order to get to the next screen. So I'll do this. And there, you see that we've separated these two screens by some artwork. So the player should know that if they try and go this way, then they have to go down the stairs. If they want to go this way, then they can just go that way freely, but they obviously can't go diagonally. Uh, and that's a kind of important part. The diagonals probably won't work. So if I turn the top layer off that shows us a screen, we can see this and I can then export it as a PNG into the assets folder, into the backgrounds folder of our game. So export. Now if we hop back into GB Studio, we can create a new scene by adding a scene here. And then as you can see, it's already, it already knows what we want and it's put it here for us. So I'll just paint it a more appealing color. And obviously the artwork isn't perfect. As you can see, it's covering up this tree here. Um, and obviously if I was to do that again, I would obviously change that. Uh, and another important thing is collision. We definitely want to put collision in. So this red means it stops all collision from all angles. And I'm just gonna outline the map. Now, here is the important part where we're actually switching the cameras or moving the camera in order to create the scenes. So first of all, we want to know where the player is starting. And obviously, let's say we come in from, you know, a different scene, we will want to make sure the camera is set up pointing at a different place. But for this, I'm just going to put the starting position scene six, I'm going to put five, five, there we go. Uh, and this should be our character starting here, it might be too above because of how we set up our character in the previous episodes. Um, but let's put it here. And now what we want to do is add in some triggers. So we want to make sure that we're on the border of the screen. We might want it one to the left, but it will require testing and evaluation afterwards. Uh, and first things first, actually, we want to have on a scene initiate, we want to set the camera position. So type in camera, we can move the camera to here. And as you can see, it can't move any more than zero, zero. Um, so it will be in this location here. So this is the first screen, which is exactly what we want. Uh, and now we basically want to make it so this trigger, when we go over here, it moves the camera to this location. So on enter, we want the camera move to and we want the camera to move to right here. And now you can see that the red box is referring to the second screen. 
we might actually want to move this one back one um, because I think zero is technically the first one and that means 19 is actually the 20th one which makes sense why I did it wrong in in tiled yeah we'll leave this here and then we'll say move that to there and we also want to move the player actually we want to move the player relative to its current position so relative and we'll basically be making sure that it goes across this boundary because we don't want the player to stand in this boundary and then move left we want the player to move straight into this boundary and this will cause some issues with the um, adventure setup because it doesn't like it when you move the player that's slightly off grid to basically say move exactly here so I recommend keeping it in top-down 2d if you can do it like this I'm sure GB Studio will update and it'll make it easier for us to um, do these kind of move relative things and move position in GB Studio 3 with the adventure mode. Uh, but for now, that's something to keep in mind, okay? So we wanna move the player relative. We wanna move them at least two so that they go one across here, maybe even four just to keep it, uh, make sure it definitely goes across. And so basically this means we touch the trigger, we then move the camera to here and then the player moves across here too um, and this might cause some problems with the second trigger and this will be right here as you can see i just copied and pasted this one and instead of moving four we're going to do minus four and we're going to set the camera to zero zero and actually we don't want it to be instant we want it to be like a movement so we're going to put the movement speed to two now we can test this out and I can already tell you that there will be some problems and we will overcome them together. So here we are in our little world. We're gonna move to the right and the camera's moving extremely slowly and then we move in. And there wasn't the problem that I thought there would be. I thought that move, as we move through into the this second screen then we would would hit the trigger of the other we'd hit the other trigger and it would move us back so let's try go back boom it works perfectly what a surprise uh, and i'll obviously increase the speed at which the camera moves we also might want to reduce this to maybe two Maybe three. I think as long as we go beyond the trigger itself. So one, let's imagine the back of our foot is here. The front is obviously in this trigger box. We want to move one, two, three. So you want it to be at least three if your trigger box is one wide. And then let's try that again with the faster speed and the player mo moving three tiles instead of four. Okay, so let's have a go. Still very slow, unfortunately. And then the player moves in. Uh, and unfortunately, instant just instantly puts the camera there. So this obviously might not be ideal for some people um, just because it's so slow. Um, but I'm hoping we can change that because I know that with the player speed, for example, there is an actual like custom speed you can put in. And I don't get why the camera doesn't have a custom speed either, um, which I'm sure they will update if we if we tell them. Um, but that's something to keep in mind if you want to make this yourself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and paste this here and here. And then I just need to move these cameras down. So I need to put it to 18. There we go. And the other one to 18 as well. Um, and then that should be these two screens set up, but obviously we don't start in that screen. So we have to make sure we can get to that screen via these steps. Okay, so I'm putting this here. I need to change this from this to this. There we go. I don't know what happened there. Uh, and then we want to move the player instead of X free, we want to move them Y free. If you remember X, is left and right, Y is up and down. Uh, and then I'll just copy that over and I'll put it here and obviously change the camera position to 20 
18 rather than 0, 18. And then I'll copy this down here and I'll change this to minus three and this to zero, zero. And then I'll move this over here again, place that there. And I'll move this to 20, zero and change this to three. Now, I think the reason why it doesn't interact with this trigger box is because we haven't ticked use collisions. Uh, if you were to tick use collisions, I've, it might be that it collides with this and then we'll be stuck in a loop where we're constantly going back and forth, colliding with the trigger boxes that change the camera each time. So obviously I haven't, I haven't tested that, but that's what I'm thinking is why it works the way it does. Okay, here we go. So let's just try this one more time. Move to the right very slow. Then should move the player. Fantastic. And now let's try this one down here. Yep, moves the camera and moves the player. Fantastic. And obviously if your collision box on your player is bigger than mine, currently mine is two wide, one high, I think. Um, technically you could get away with, oh, I could, I could get away with moving it Y2 and minus two because of the uh, height of it being um, only one, but I might be wrong. But let's try this way. It's a shame it's so slow. Yep, and then back. Arguably, you would obviously want the player and the camera to move together, but the way that events work in GP Studio, they work one by one, which keeps things very simple, but obviously gives us things like this. Uh, and then let's try up here. Fantastic. And down here. Beautiful. So I hope this helped you. If you wanted to make a, uh, a Zelda style game, then you now know how to set up the cameras. And you also know some of the problems that you'll probably encounter uh, when doing it yourself as well. Uh, just like this, it uh, might not be perfect. And there we go. We've actually just encountered a bug where the player is now not seen. That's the problem here. We're moving down. The problem is I put free in here rather than minus free. That might be all the problem was, which is good to know. So let's try that one more time with our Zelda sprite. Obviously the camera movements are so slow, it's very annoying. And obviously we're animated while we're doing this as well, which isn't fantastic. We could technically stop the animation, set the animation to idle. Uh, when we're going through. Okay, let's see if this works. Fantastic. Okay, so obviously that's just a human error of putting the wrong value in there, um, but it seems like I have now made it so we have these all four scenes connected. And obviously if you make your um, maps a multiple of the screen size, you could obviously do it so uh, the camera moves, um, has like some overlap. You could have like maybe one or two tiles of overlap. That might be how it works in the original Zelda. Um, but you need to keep in mind the slow movement speed of the camera is very frustrating. Um, and arguably is the one thing that's holding this back. If you could change the speed of the camera to a faster speed that isn't instant, then I think it would be fine. So yeah, I'll put my patrons up on the screen right now. Thank you so much to you guys. You guys are the best. Remember to like the video if you like the video. Subscribe if you haven't already. Let me know what you thought of this video, if you thought it was helpful, interesting. I actually made this video because somebody suggested it and I hope that that person is watching this. Let me know what you'd want to see in the future. My next tutorial plans are to either make a platformer tutorial, just the basics of that, shoot em up tutorial. Uh, someone has also asked for a point and click tutorial. But yeah, I'll leave it there and I'll thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.